Welcome back. So, Group B is all about familiar foes. You have Spain and Netherlands, which was the final last time. You have Spain and Chile, who were in the same group last time, and both of them advanced. Then you have Australia, just sitting there. But in a tournament that's more about huge rocks and handshakes than it is about soccer, you never know. You'll see what I mean. Here's Group B. Group B opens with that rematch of last year's final, Spain versus the Netherlands. For Spain, we start with El Caganer. Witness the tranquility of the nativity. The mother Mary, the baby Jesus, the... Wait, what's that guy doing in the corner? Oh, he's pooping. Yes, that's El Caganer, an origins unknown, centuries old member of nativity scenes in Catalan areas. He poops! In 2005, Barcelona put out a city nativity scene without him because public defecation had been made illegal. There was such an outcry that the little pooper was back in the next year. For the Netherlands? Damn it! The land we call the Netherlands isn't really land. It's an alluvial plain, which means it's sediment left behind by water. This is why the country is more prone to flood problems. Its natural state is to be flooded. This also explains why the Netherlands is as flat as a tabletop. Without flood control and dams, two-thirds of the country's area would be underwater, some parts within 48 hours. New to the fascinating guide is Lisa Andrews. Who knew? Netherlands, two to zero. Update those scores and it's time for Chile, Australia. For Chile, it's the Beagle Conflict. By 1982, when the Falklands War kicked off between the UK and Argentina, Chile and Argentina had been fighting over ownership of the Beagle Islands for more than a decade. Argentina had to fight the UK to the east and keep Chile from invading the Beagle Islands to the west. So what did Chile do? Install a British radar near the border and inform the UK whenever Argentina sent aircraft east. Argentina lost on both fronts. For Australia, time to go waltz and Matilda! Great Britain exported 150,000 convicts to Australia during the first half of the 19th century, 10,000 of which were ferried out to Western Australia. Out there, something strange happened. They formed a flash language, which eventually turned into what we call Australian English. Waltzing Matilda may be a national ballad. It's also a commemoration of that language. Swagman, Billy Can, Kuliba, Billabong, and so on. To waltz Matilda is actually to travel with all of your belongings wrapped up in a blanket carried over your back. Christian's back and he says... Chicks dig ingenious military maneuvers. 2-0 Chile. Great, update the scores and we move on to Australia, Netherlands. For Australia, it's the handshake. 2004, the day before the election, Prime Minister John Howard ran into challenger Mark Latham and shook his hand. Except Latham pulled Howard close and being taller, glowered over him. At a television studio, on tape. Howard won. Latham later said it was retribution for Howard shaking his wife's hand too hard at an earlier function because acting like a weirdo and losing the election is what chivalry looks like these days. For the Dutch, it's Veer Dasa. Every year, around a million people gather in Nijmegen to walk. Yep, the Veer Dasa, or four-day marches, were started in 1909 by the Dutch League for Physical Education to improve national health. Initially, it was dominated by the military, but nowadays, civilians participate in a wide range of distances, the serious participants going 30, 40, or 50 kilometers for each of four days. That's walking up to 124 miles. You know, for fun! And we bring back Alex for this one. Alex? Physical domination over physical education. Australia, 2 to 1. And with that, we roar right into Spain versus Chile for Spain. It's Rui Lopez! The Queen's Gambit, Joko Piano, the Sicilian, the King's Indian, the Italian, the Dutch, nestled among the most popular chess openings is one name, Rui Lopez. Rodrigo Rui Lopez de Segura was a 16th century priest whose book thoroughly analyzed one opening and catapulted it to popularity. The Rui Lopez has so many variations that it doesn't have just one entry in the encyclopedia of chess openings, it has 40. For Chile, it's Atacama. Aside from Antarctica, Atacama Desert is the driest place in the entire world. Some parts of it haven't had rain for over 400 years. The desert runs right along the ocean, but its high altitude and the surrounding Andes Mountains squeeze all of the moisture out of the air. In 2010, researchers found a whale graveyard in the desert. No, they weren't killed by lack of water. They were 9 million years old and probably died from lethal algae blooms. 
This is a tough one. Here's Ryan. Chile, one to zero. Thank you. Turning to match number five, it's Australia, Spain. For Australia, it's Uluru. It's huge, but it's just the tip of a sheet of rock that extends several miles into the earth. Uluru, or Ayers Rock, is central to Aboriginal ancestral stories and creation myths. To take a piece of the rock is to invite misfortune. As recently as 2008, a group of tourists from New Zealand mailed back pieces they acquired through the old five-finger discount because they thought they had been cursed. For Spain, it's San Jordi. Saint George, or in Spanish, San Jordi, slew the dragon, and where its blood was first shed, a rose grew. His feast day is also the death day of Cervantes and Shakespeare, so in Barcelona, La Dia de San Jordi is a festival of books and roses. Carts and carts of roses and books line the streets so that a man can find a rose and exchange it with his woman for a book. A rose for love and a book forever. Eat your heart out, Hallmark. Here to chime in, Emma's back. Spain wins 1-0. Paper beats rock every time. I like it. Finally, it's Netherlands, Chile. For the Netherlands, we have Matahari. Margaretha Gertruda Zella was a kindergarten teacher in training, a classified ad bride, a battered wife, a mother of two children who died from syphilis, a trailblazing exotic dancer, an international social butterfly, and a German spy. One of those things earned her the firing squad. The big lesson here is that life has many chapters. Another lesson is don't spy for the Germans, it'll get you shot! Closing it up for Chile, it's Easter Island! So, there are the statues, we know that. There's also this. About 6,000 people reside on Easter Island, which was annexed by Chile in 1888. Now, mind you, Easter Island is a full 2,182 miles away from continental Chile. The next closest inhabited land of any sort is Pitcairn Island, which is 1,300 miles away and has only 50 residents. This doesn't mean Chile don't care. As recently as 2011, Chilean troops descended on Easter Island to police an indigenous rights protest. Last but not least, another fascinating newcomer, Anne Norman. I'll take an exotic dancer over an exotic island. One, zero. Enough said. Well, there you go. We get Dutch courage and Chilean um, sea bass advancing. Come back for group C. It has a city from the past, a city that runs fast, and a city full of nasty garbage. You'll see.